I have a surface. Right? Yes, I'm recording. So first, I'm going to copy paste these points, right? Bring them down here. It's kind of a mess, mm -hmm. but whatever. I'm going to disconnect the Z values so that I get the same points flat on the ground, right? Mm -hmm. I'm then going to do two sets of lines, right? So I'll link this as my endpoint, right? The one at the bottom, and then the one matches up here as my starting point to get columns on that side, oh. right? What the hell? Same thing over here. That would take so long to actually, wow. <laughs> to actually do I'm not done, I'm not done. <laughs> Just that one, cool. Okay, so boom. You're like, oh. Columns, and then let's say I want them all to be the same radius, so I'll just plug them both in here to pipe, and I'll do a radius of like uh, 30 centimeters. And then caps, I can right click, and then here I have non-flat or round, right, for the caps for the pipes. Mm -hmm. But if I hover over caps, it'll also tell me, specify the type. Zero equals none, one equals two, well, I mean one equals, one equals two, one <laughs> equals flat and two equals round. Mm -hmm. So I can type in one, whoops, right? Change the number slider to have a maximum value of two because my options range from zero to two. Yeah. Right, and now I can cycle through Oh my god. Right? No cap, uh, flat cap, or round cap. What the heck? You can really count like a billion. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's so cool. Next, I want to do a paneling on the top surface. So there's a few ways I could do that. I'm going to show you the more complicated way. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to first make the loft into a mesh. Right? B rep is anything that is surface derived, poly surfaces, closed poly surfaces, so on. Mm -hmm. So now it's a mesh. I'm going to use face boundaries to see the subdivision of the mesh, uh -huh. right? So right now I see that the mesh is actually just following the same logic that was set up by the loft, yeah. right? So instead I'll go to the plugin Weaverbird, which if you're going to mess with meshes, yeah. it's a must have. Uh -huh. And then subdivisions here can change the way that the mesh is subdivided. So I can check for that new pattern there. So it just kind of subdivided down the middle. Right, so I'm gonna look for something a bit more interesting. Maybe this mid edge. Okay, that's not really working for what I need to do, right? Like it's working, it's giving me the edges, but it's giving me an error and I can't really distinguish. What hmm. is the plugin called? Weaverbird. Weaverbird. How'd you get that? Weaverbird? Yeah. Haven't it has its own it. website. It's called Weaverbird. If you look up Weaverbird, yeah, Weaverbird. it'll show up. Um, okay, I'll try to use this one, Weaverbird's mid-edge subdivision, right? Then Weaverbird has here transform functions, so I'll use the picture frame one to kind of cut holes into these mm -hmm. faces of the mesh. So I'm going to hide everything up to this point, except for the columns, so that I can see the subdivision, right? Distance, this is going to determine how far uh, the opening is so it's it was set to 5 so I'm just gonna type 5.5 so I have a little more control mm -hmm. I don't like the maximum of 10 so I'll change that to say 50 right so now I can see the openings or you know what I could also do is copy my domain and my range Right? And I want it to open from 2 to 15, 14, right? Okay. Like I want the openings to change. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now the steps, rather than the amount of points, I need it to match the amount of mesh faces, right? So I could deconstruct mesh. Right? And here I get the faces. All I do is list length so that I know how many faces. Now, you see this uh, dashed line? Yeah. Remember we talked about branches? I'm gonna have to dive into this next workshop because branches are really complicated to get into. But essentially, it means that the faces are set up into groups. So there's multiple lists within this list. Uh -huh. Right, we have list zero and list one and so on. And those are all the coordinates of each point? Or? Those are all the data of the faces, okay. the mesh faces. So what I'll do here is I'll flatten so that I can get the total amount of faces, which is 323, mm -hmm. right? Minus one gives me enough values for the openings. So I'm going to have to change the domain. 
So they're more open on this side, more closed on that side. Yeah. Right? Again, graph mapper. I can use Perlin noise. Uh, again, I need to change the scale here. So I'm just going to change to 0 to 100, since this is what my domain is basically messing with. Just to make it easier for myself, 0 to 100, 0 to 100. Right? And I can control the openings now with the graph. Maybe 100 was too much. I'll bring it down to 50. Okay. Next, I can use uh, Weaver Bird's Mesh Thicken to give thickness to it. How much thickness? 20 centimeters. It's like a really strong beam, right? Mm -hmm. And finally, let's say I wanted to add something else. This is uh, it's basically just taking a center point of each face and extruding it outward. So I'll do this. I could do it downward. I'll do like little, spikies? like little spikes coming down. Yep. So cool. And I'll just, again, copy my domain and range. I could use the same data, like the, mm -hmm. the Perlin noise, so that it matches the openings on the top. Yeah. Right? So basically, where it's most open, it'll also be deeper. Should be? No. Oops, I plugged it in where meshes go, not where data goes. So, remember we were saying about remapping? Yeah. So I can just remap. No, what's remapping? Remapping is when we, yeah, uh, when we were going from okay. 0 to 100 or 0 to 10. So these are my values that I'm remapping, right? My source domain of the values that I'm remapping, I can use bounds in order to change a list of numbers into a domain of numbers. Mm -hmm. And then my target. So I want these to extend from 10 centimeters to uh, half a meter. Oh, so I have to uh, create a domain. And now these mapped values can now be my distances. Oh, yeah. wow. What the hell? That's so cool. And I'll just put it into Rhino. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that looks so cool. Nice. Like a 10-minute model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> I mean, you do have to know all the sets of connections, which is a lot. Like right. Part, I know right? it. I know it. Yeah. Like I know it. But again, with I'm trying to instill a process to you guys that you can kind of search for these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Like you can always search and see if there's a keyword that you have in mind that matches a command in Grasshopper, yeah. or really. I mean, all the stuff that we use, like creating lines and, you know, I mean, in the beginning, we only use points, line, and then just numbers, right? Yeah. And then different ways of creating numbers. So in your sets section is where you create uh, like a series, right? Or a set of random numbers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, math is where you can then add, subtract, divide, um, so on and so forth. Okay. So, yeah, how do you always pushes for you guys to just search whatever it is that you need mm -hmm. to use and that's how he learned I learned by learning everything I can use mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you know if there's multiple ways I could make a surface uh -huh. the great thing is like let's say loft right instead of loft I could have also been like okay could I use network surface could I use extrude along right I can drop them all in here and then see what inputs I do or don't have or what can I you know then connect yeah. Right, so you can explore all your options. All right.